Hello there folks, this is Hammer back again. Today I want to show you an example on how to use the mod slur, a new CV slew rate tool, together with a mod panel and some other Hammer devices. Let me just add a few more notes and get rid of the on-screen keyboard. Now let's see uh, the devices so we can examine where the sounds come from. Up here is one of the mod slewers which we will return to soon. The mod panel is our main control which we will also investigate deeper in a while. As you can see there are basically six channels to this setup, each controlling one sound source and some additional controls to the right. The sounds come from these six subtractors, which get the sequence of notes from an RPG-8 each. The RPGs are set to hold and you can update the incoming chord at will. We will take a quick look at some of these later. So now's the time to briefly check out that mod slur. Slew rate relates to how fast a CB signal is changing, and with mod slur you specify a max slew rate of the output. With fast transitions on the input, this will lead to a kind of lag while the output is sort of catching up. In this specific setup, I'm using the option to align time of changes rather than slew rate, thus making output signals from simultaneous changes on inputs reach the target levels at the same time. A transition takes the specified time, no matter how big the change is. You can study this demo setup on your own, assuming you have access to all the included hammer rack extensions. Download is available from the product page at hammer.se, including the combinator patch, as well as mod panel patches and measure patches. In the download you will also find the Excel application for creating patches, which I will demonstrate later in the video. This will however require that you have access to Excel, and it has only been tested with Windows, not Mac. How ModSlur works in detail uh, is detailed on our product pages at Propellerhead and at Hammer.se, so I will not cover everything now. I will however show you how some control signals in this setup are relayed to their destinations. If we take the level control of output channel 1 as an example, we can see that it goes from the mod panel to the first position of the mod slur. We follow on to the MX splurger, where it is merged with the, a second CV signal before finally going on to the level CV input 1 of the mixer. Okay? So let's check out what that other merge cable derived from. Well, it too comes from the mod panel from the momentary pre-listen button. These buttons can be used to check out the sound of each channel without fiddling with any faders. What about the other control outputs from the mod panel? Well, as expected, most of these go through mod slurs too. And finally, end up as modulation inputs. 
to the corresponding subtractor. The gate and note of course come from the RPG-8. Maybe you noticed earlier that I changed patches of the mod panel. Yeah? Well, this is where the mod sluers really come to use in this setup. Let's go again. So you can see the indicators of the mod sluer showing how the outputs are taking some time to catch up with the changes on the input. Are there pod racers in there somehow? I don't know. The transition time of all mod sluers are primarily set by the knobs and then modulated via the MX Plurger from the common slew rates knob of the mod panel. And yes, you can have different slew rates for different patches since the knob setting is included in the patch itself. Well, that's about it regarding the mod slewer. Now let me just show you how I use the mod seltzer to select one of eight sets of six arpeggio rates for the six RPG-8s. The control voltage from the mod panel goes to the selector input and the selector output goes in this measure 8K. The mesh knobs of the measure are set to match different RPG-8 rate modulation input levels. The knobs are set so that the rates will on average increase with the position of the fader in a somewhat random fashion. This is it my friends. Except for that Excel application I mentioned earlier, I encourage those of you who may have the slightest interest in this to please stay a while. And here it is. If you're able to get it to work on your own computer, you can read more inside this worksheet. Right now I will just show you how quickly you can get new patches to try out. I just created 10 new patches immediately available for checking out. Let's see what we got. Patch one, yeah. As you can see on the level faders, most of the created patches uh, have a rather few channels active. And also the knobs show that most of them are actually down at uh, level zero.
and up at the mod slewer you can see for each patch change which levels are changing. Uh, the yellow indicator lamp is quite clear on that. So, back to Excel. If we lower this percentage of probability to use the first value, which is the zero value, we will get uh, much more sounds, including uh, the amount of frequency modulation. Of course there are plenty of ways to fine tune the patch generator and this was just a quick show. Quite obvious now that we got a much larger part of faders and knobs activated to a different level from zero. And this probability also includes the arpeggio rate fader. So we get a higher chance of getting faster patterns. Another thing you can notice is that the slew rate knob is uh, the same between all these patches. That is also something which uh, was set up for the input patches of that uh, patch generator. So now I will leave you to just push that try button, go to the Hummer product page, download patches etc and then amuse yourselves for a while. Bye bye! Turn it off now. <laughs>